it's amazing to be a part of this men's ministry, and it's amazing to be a part of this day. And I welcome everybody who's here today. What a blessing it is to see so many people out here. You know what the amazing thing is, is that, as Pastor David was mentioning, society has really dumbed us down as men. And the theme of our conference is to walk worthy. You know, we look at TV commercials and we're too dumb to buy a house. We look at uh, uh, TV commercials, we're too dumb to buy a car. We're not even mentioned as a spiritual leadership in our, in our families anymore because society has just dumbed us down. But to see all the men here today who have decided to walk worthy, and even the men that gave their lives to Christ today, is a testament that God is still at work in the heart of men. And that's the amazing thing. So as Pastor David mentioned, uh, my name is John Mata, uh, one of the staff ministers here. I tell Pastor David, he really lowered his standards higher than me. <laughs> the connection I have with Pastor David goes quite a few years back. When I was six years old, he had a home Bible study at my parents' house. And I was only six years old, and so they had my parents there, and, and he had some people there. And you know what the cool thing about that today is that in our living room today, I have a masked off where Pastor David used to sit, like a crime scene. <laughs> and I have candles all around it, and I charge brothers and sisters to come five bucks to come check it out. And that's how my wife and I are able to go get yogurt or dessert after dinner. But we have a history, and it's amazing to see, and I don't remember too much, but it's amazing to see what God has started to work then and to look what he has done now. And to have conferences for men to come to walk worthy. And so what a blessing it is. Another thing that's cool is, is uh, my daughter is this, about the same age as when Pastor David met me. And then now I'm full circle and I'm here and I'm here sharing with you guys. And so that's the amazing thing. Uh, and, and it's always good to look back to see what God is doing here today. You know, I was raised in a Christian home. I had parents that did a great job raising me. I had parents that loved me. I had parents that showed me the ways of Christ. And they showed their way through Christ through how they loved me. And all through my high school years, I was really active with my church at that time. But then I went away to college or to school. And that's where things really started getting a little weird for me. I fell in love with the world. You know, in uh, 2 Timothy, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10, Paul describes Demas as forsaking him for the love of the world. And I too fell in love with the world. And looking at this, looking from it at, from this point now, seeing the heartbreak and, and the, the devastation I caused my family, my parents. And so what I like to do is just share a little bit about that time, but I want to take the time and, and parallel it to the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15. Because it was a relation that I can have with the prodigal son because uh, with my parents providing such love for me and raising me in such a good way that I demanded my way or the highway. And I went the way of the world. I began to live my life as wasteful living as it says in Luke chapter 15, 13, where it says, and not many days later, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with wasteful living. And that was me. I began drinking. I began having carnal relationships. I began abusing drugs. And before you knew it, I was a slave to methamphetamine. Any way or any way you can use, I was using. Any way you can get high, I was doing. And it controlled my life for many years. It controlled my life where and everywhere possible where I was a slave to this drug. 
it's amazing to think back what we would do. I know some of us in here have the same testimony, probably even bigger. But what we would do for that drug. And so my challenge is to you guys is what are we doing instead? Are you using the same drive that we had to use drugs to serve Jesus, to serve our families, to serve our children? Do we have that same desire? Because we know, all know that that lifestyle leaves nothing but brokenness and destruction. We know what it does. It chews us up and spits us out. Nobody wanted me around. I was a thief. When I would go to people's houses, I wouldn't, the first thing I would look for is what can I steal? I needed to support my habit. I needed to do whatever I could to do what I ever had to do in order for me to be where I needed to be. I would steal. I stole from my parents. I stole from my sister. I stole from family members. I was in a deep famine, spiritual famine in my life. You know, looking back to the prodigal son, it says, when he spent all there, when he had spent all, there was, arose a severe famine in the land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and sent him into the fields to feed the swine. You know, I went from this place where I was raised in a home, and now I became a citizen of this lifestyle. A citizen of brokenness, a citizen of destruction, severed relationships. Nobody wanted me around. I remember sitting in the back of my uh, truck that I had taken from my dad and just sitting there and not know, knowing where to go, not knowing what to do. And there was this famine that was in my life. I was in a deep, spiritual, horrendous, dark place, full of anger, full of hatred. And I don't need to go in the details of what went on. I'm giving the G-rated version. I told Pastor David that I was going to give a bragamony instead of a testimony. That the fish was going to go from this big to that big. But then I wouldn't have a job on Monday morning, so... But anyone who's here knows the lifestyle that's involved when you become a slave to anything. And this was an ongoing cycle. It was something I've, I would get in, I would get clean, I would fall out, I would get clean, I would fall out, and it just seemed like, Lord, I need your, I need your, I need your power. I begin using drugs intravenously. And it wasn't even a point where I was even getting high anymore. It was just to maintain, and it was, a, a, it was just bondage. It was horrible. It was a lifestyle that was just sick. And in my heart, I was crying out to the Lord because I had this severe famine in my life. I had this spiritual darkness that was a big hole in my life. And all I wanted to do was just be away. And I thought in my life, you know, I'm either going to die, I'm going to be in prison, or I'm going to be a druggie all my life. Those are the three options that I had. It was an ongoing cycle of going to jail, coming out, going into a men's home, coming out, going to jail. And it just seemed like the cycle was going deeper and deeper and deeper, and I was tired of it. You know, the last time I had gone to jail, I could have easily picked up three to five years, easily, easily, for the charges that were charged against me. I had decided in my mind that, that what I'm going to do is if I'm going to go that to jail, I may as, well, may, well, may as well just go make a name for myself. So I had, remember, I got taken in. It was overnight. I got, uh, got up the morning, didn't eat breakfast. And by dinner time, I wanted to find out who was the one kind of running the place in there because I just want to get my food tray and crack them over the head and just start making a name for myself. If I'm going to do this time, I'm going to go for it. But something miraculously happened. I was released the next morning. For the charges that I was charged to be released the next morning was a hand of the Lord. This has all happened last week, you guys, so please forgive me. <laughs> Ha, <laughs> ha, 
I began to feel the Holy Spirit tugging at me. I started listening to Christian radio. I started listening to uh, K-Wave. I started reading the Bible a little bit, and I felt this tugging. And that was the time my parents were really praying for me. Family members that are, I know that are watching right now were praying for me. And in verse 17, where, when the prodigal son says he came to a point of realization, like, hey, in my father's house, I can go there and I can at least be a servant. I was like, if I get back to the Lord, I know he will give me the strength to become clean. If I just get to church, getting out of jail, I knew I had to do the right thing. I knew this was time, that my time was running out with God's grace and that I had to do something or I would be too far out for me to even come back. The church I was attending at that time, I would, I would come to church, I would backslide, I would come to church, I would backslide. And things weren't working for me, and I was getting frustrated. And, and one day my dad said to me, hey, why don't you go to Pastor David's church? I was like, yes. So I started coming. You know what the amazing thing is, you guys? It's 11 years to this date, June 7, June 2nd, 2007, I was one of these men who came and surrendered their life to Christ. Amen. It was one of those messages that Pastor David gave, and it just really struck me to the core, where the Holy Spirit really started working and saying, I need to do a work in you. And I came forward and rededicated my life that day, 11 years today, and now I'm honored to be on staff. Who would have ever thought Jesus did? My challenge, it was the, it was the and my challenge for you is to get involved. It was the ministry of lion tamers. It was the ministry of, of being around men. It was the men's ministry, the lion tamers ministry. Sitting under Pastor David was what gave me the tools that I needed that Jesus with, in, his, in his awesome power is able to restore. And so I want to encourage you guys to get involved with, with our men's ministry, to get involved with the different things uh, that God has provided uh, I had some slides here. My, for some reason, not coming up, but we have uh, we have men's small groups. We have softball. We have a weekly breakfast that we get together and do as men. We have man to man on a quarterly basis. We have all these different things for men to come together as iron sharpens iron. Because you know what? As as Raw was saying, we need each other. We need each other. And men, and God has called you guys to be men of God, to be men of your home, to be men of your families, to be men of your children, to be the priest in your home. God has called you. I thank you for allowing me to share this time. You know, it, it says here at the end of, uh, as the father is talking to the son, it says, bring the fatted calf here and kill it for, and let us eat, for this is my son, was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. God wants to do a work in all of your lives. This is just one story of the transformational power that God has done throughout this whole church, and God is gonna continue to do a work in all of your lives. So I want everybody to stand up. And I want you to repeat I want us to all recite in unison one scripture. 2 Corinthians 5.17. You guys ready? If any man's in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. That's a promise. Amen, you guys. Thank you. You guys can sit down. You guys can have a seat.